What's up everybody? Today I'm going to walk through a quick script that finds heel strikes and toe offs during a gait analysis on an instrumented treadmill. Uh, and we're going to do this using a 10 Newton threshold using the vertical ground reaction force. So the first thing that I have here is just a clear all statement. And then I've got a MATLAB struct here that has ground reaction forces for multiple consecutive steps captured from a split belt treadmill that has force platforms under each of the two parallel belts. So if I open up the struct here, you can see I've got three different subfields, X, Y, and Z. Uh, these are just the three-dimensional ground reaction forces. It's a time series, and I'm going to be using the vertical, which in our lab is Z. So let me plot these just to show you what they look like. I'll just plot one that we're going to be using. So uh, plot data.grfz. And this is just to show you what the data look like. As you can see, it's multiple steps. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different steps. And what I'm going to do is find where the heel strikes and where the toe off occurs on each of these steps. And then I'll walk through uh, just a brief for loop structure that would allow you to go through each of those steps and pull some variable of interest. Okay, so what we're going to start with is just uh, we're going to create, well, let's do this to make it a little bit easier. Let's say GRF, let's pull our data out of the data struct, a little bit easier to work with. So GRFZ is going to be equal to um, data.grfz. Again, it's just reallocating these data into a, a single variable here, so it's a little bit easier to work with. I'm going to pre-allocate two other variables called toe-offs and heel strikes. And you can see I'm just setting these uh, equal to empty brackets here. That's because I'm going to create a loop that goes through and adds things to these um, based on certain conditional statements. Let's go ahead and do that now. Move this up just a bit. So I'm going to say for I is equal to 1 through the length of GRF Z. Let me just run this to show you what that length is. It's going to be the length of that entire time series data that we just pulled. So if you look down here, we'll say length GRF Z. And it's 11,181 frames of data. We're capturing at 1,000 frames per second. So this is about uh, 11 seconds worth of data, right? So we're going through that entire thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for this threshold. And so what we'll have to do is we'll say um, if PRFZ i is less than 10 newtons, right? So what we're looking for is if it's less than 10 newtons, and then at some point it's greater than 10 newtons, and we'll find that frame where it goes from less than 10 to greater than 10, and that's going to be a way to threshold this. We'll say and PRF the I plus one, so on the next frame, is it greater than 10 newtons? So if it goes from less than 10 newtons to greater than 10 newtons, we've got a heel strike. So we'll say heel strikes and plus one, so end onto the end of this, and we're going to say equal to I plus one. So we're going at that first frame that's greater than 10 newtons. End. Okay, so that's how we're going to get our heel strikes. Now we're going to say if ERF Z I goes from greater than 10 to less than 10, we're going to add a toe off. So this is now greater than 10 on the less than 10. Toe offs, same thing, end plus one here is going to be equal to i. So this is just going to be i and not i plus one because we want the first instance where it's greater than 10 and the last instance where it's greater than 10. Now the other thing that we're going to have to do up here is we're going to have to specify. So if we're if we just go one through the length of GRFZ, at the last element it's going to be looking for i plus one and that's not going to exist. So what we have to put up here is a quick statement that if i is equal to the length 
P or F Z, we're going to have to break out of this loop. All right. Otherwise, it's going to throw us an error because it'll get to the, the length of GRFC, that last element, element 1,000 or 11,181, and it's going to be trying to, it's going to go through this conditional and it's going to be looking for I plus one, and I plus one isn't going to exist. So if it is equal to the length, we're just going to break out of the loop. Okay, that should um, run. Let's run it, and then we'll plot it to make sure it looks right. So that runs. We should have heel strikes and toe off. Should be um, uh, basically arrays of of heel strike and toe off frames. We're going to go ahead and plot these. So figure plot P or F Z. We're going to hold on, and then we're going to plot our heel strikes and toe off. So plot along the x-axis. We want heel strikes. On the y-axis, what we're going to do is we're going to call G or F Z at those moments of heel strikes and we're going to turn these into uh, red circles we'll give them a larger marker size so they're a little bit easier to see we'll say marker size 8 and we're going to say marker face color red so there's our heel strikes we're going to do the same thing with co-ops now so let's copy this and paste it Give ourselves some room. And instead of heel strikes, we need toe offs. We'll change these accordingly. And instead of red, let's go ahead and make these green. And then let's plot these to make sure they look good. Okay, there you have it. So again, those heel strikes should be red, toe off should be green. And what we're seeing here is that for every time it goes from under 10 to greater than 10, we've got a heel strike. Every time it goes from greater to 10 to less than 10, we've got a toe off. So these are gonna be our frames. Now, if you wanna set something up after you find your gate events to say, you know, a lot of times if you're just looking for support phase mechanics, like let's say we're looking for support time or the peak vertical ground reaction force within each step, what you can do is a very simple for a is equal to one to the length of heel strikes. Remember, we had 10 different uh, support phases, so the length of heel strikes should be equal to 10. Let's make sure that checks out. 10, yep. Okay, so and then you can just say basically whatever you want to find. So let's say we're looking for uh, support time on each step. We'll pre-allocate to an empty array, and we'll say support time end plus one. So end onto the end of support time will be equal to uh, toe offs a minus heel strike a, and then. These are in frames, remember, so to get this into a time, what we need to do is take that and divide it by our sampling frequency, which is 1,000. Okay, and then this should go through. It's going to look for, well, on the first time through the loop, it's going to say toe offs one minus heel strikes one divided by 1,000, and then two, and then three, and then four, and it'll go. Uh, 10 times, and then let's also say we want to look for peak vertical PRS. We'll send this to an empty array to begin with, and then inside of our loop, we're going to say peak vert GRS. Same thing here, end plus one will be equal to the maximum, and then within max, what we're going to do is call a GRF. Z, and we're going to call this from heel strikes A through toe offs A. All right, so again, on that first time through, we're looking at heel strikes one through toe offs one, and we're, and we're pulling in the GRF Z for, uh, in between those two frame numbers, right? So that's just going to give us the support phase of the first step. On the second time, it's going to be the support phase of the second step, and we're looking for the maximum during those time periods. So let's make sure this runs, and then we'll have a look at them. 
runs just fine. So we're, let's look at the support times, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. You see it's very consistent. This means this, that the time between toe off or the time between heel strike and toe off was about 0.7 seconds on all of these steps. Let's go ahead and take a look at the peaks. Yeah, so these all look good. Let's go ahead and plot this just to make sure it looks okay. So it's at 924, this first peak here is, is pulling out this one. And that's 923, so my cursor might not be hovering over it exactly, but um, and then 906 on that second one. Uh, yeah, so I just think I'm not quite hovering over it exactly where it is. So let's just look at this. This first one is 924. Let's make this a little bit larger. Nine twenty three point five. Yeah, I think the issue is I'm just not hovering over it, the right part of it. Nine twenty four. There you go. So there's our nine twenty four, which is what was pulled in right there. A little bit more difficult to hover over it when you when you're that far zoomed out okay there you go hope you guys enjoyed this video just a quick one on finding these gate events this is a very common method using a 10 newton threshold from the vertical ground reaction force uh, you can also use kinematics you do have to be careful when you're doing this on uh, a split belt treadmill with parallel belts because sometimes one foot lands on both belts uh, which can throw off the ground reaction forces a bit but if you did enjoy this go ahead and give it a thumbs up Subscribe to my channel. You can also find me on Twitter. A lot of my codes are up on GitHub. You can also see me on LinkedIn and ResearchGate. All right, until next time, keep coding.